Hello lovely painter people and welcome to my studio here in Northumberland. What I'm going to do today is a quick watercolour and I'm working from my last book which is Coastal Landscapes. The painting I'm actually going to do is this one here which is Sligo in Ireland, County Mayo. And what you get with this, with this book I might change that a little bit as I'm doing it, because I don't really like doing things twice. All the drawings are in the back of the book, and they're actually on the watercolour paper that I'm using. They're drawn onto the watercolour paper, so they're just ready to be used straight away. Or, if you don't like using those drawings, then just use them as a reference, just copy the drawing, and you've got the painting. But all, they're all in there. Probably miss one there. there we go. All there for you. Lots of them. One for every painting. Easy. Incidentally, when you finish with this, you can close it. You've got a little elastic band that goes around there. To be honest, I have no idea what that's for, but it's a handy little thing. And what I'm going to do to start with, quick outline drawing. As I've said, I'm probably going to change it slightly. Will be right about there. Coming down. I'm pressing on slightly harder with my pencil than I would ordinarily, just so that you can see the outline. Actually, a little bit below there, that's better. If you make a mistake like that, don't worry about it, just draw another line. All the way across there, like so. I've got another big hill coming out just below the top of that one. Coming up and down. Like so. A little bit of middle distance land there. A very, very simple outline drawing. You don't need to fiddle about too much with your drawing and then carry this line on here. Lots of people say, what kind of pencil do you use? I really should get a kickback from this company, you know, because I use IKEA pencils. No special grade, just a little cheapy. When you go to IKEA and you get to that bit where you fill the forms in, they've got those little stubs, get a pocket full. <laughs> now, a little bit of land here. And there will be some trees on there, but I'm not going to draw them all. I'll just give you intimate where I'm going to put a few there. Now, a bit of land coming out here. I've got a bush. Out there. And then my track, my path. I say path. Depends which part of the world you're from. If you're from London, it could be a path. <laughs> so a bit there, and then grasses or grasses coming down there. And then a snippet of land coming out here into the water. Keep looking at this all the time, it's there, ready for me. The original. I do hope the camera person is not getting too close ups, too many close ups here, because it's a fairly awful sight. I say camera person because it's Gail, and I can't make any mistakes because I'm scared of her. It's okay, the camera can shake if you wish. A bit there. And here I'm gonna have a clump of rocks, but as I said, I don't need to draw those. And that's it, drawing done. This line you won't even see because there's paint over it. Voila, a very, very simple drawing. 
and leave it at that. As the experts always tell you, always keep your palate clean. <laughs> and people say to me, how the heck do you get clean colours out of that? I have no idea really, but believe it or not, that is quite organised. All my blues, greys, blacks and everything are all missing that bit. And they're all squeezed in the same places. All my browns and tones of browns are mixed there. All my different greens are mixed in that bit. And my yellows are all mixed in there. The rest I just pull out from where they are. At this stage I've finished the drawing now so I can take my reading glasses off. It's a sign of the times, I'm afraid, folks. Now, before any paint, loads and loads of water. And I'm using my one and a half inch flat wash brush for this. Aquafine brushes. I'll show you these in a second once I've got the sky on. This is the one and a half inch flat. Plenty of water. And at this stage you really can't put too much water on. You can put too little on, but you can't put too much on. Give yourself the time. If you have to wait for it to dry, so be it. Now, wash out, squeeze out and mop up. You'll notice I've put the book away at this stage because, like I said, I don't like doing things twice. So, painting the same thing twice, I just don't like it. So I should change the colours a bit. Bit of yellow ochre there. Wash out, squeeze out and mop it up. Now, ultramarine blue, that's French ultramarine blue, with a tiny touch of burnt sienna into it, just to darken the blue a little bit. Look me blue and burnt sienna. Plenty of water into that. And again, whack it on at the top. Don't be afraid of the dark. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the dark. Because remember, it is going to dry about 50% lighter than when I put it on. Remember that. Wash out, squeeze out. Just let it run for a second or two. It looks a mess. It'll be right. He said, hopefully. Now, again, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. A little bit less water into it this time. But a little bit more burnt sienna as well. Bit of that. Bit of this, bit of that. Wipe on your frock. And set some dark stuff here, look. Very, very simple, just pop it on. Now, if this were a light blue fluffy clouded sky, you wouldn't want that running down. But for an overcast sky, it's nice to have it running down a little bit. A little bit of atmosphere. Wash out, squeeze out. And again, mop it up. Now when it comes to lighter clouds, this is the stage when people go to their cotton wool buds, their tissues, pots of salt, hair dryers, kitchen rolls, tea towels. I've seen it all used for clouds. All you need is your brush. Wash out, squeeze out, and with the brush on its side like that, twist and drag. There. Look at that. So easy. Again, wash out. Take some out there. All I'm doing is sucking paint out of the paper. If I use kitchen roll for that, the kitchen roll would suck the paint out all the way down to the paper, leaving with a big hard white blob with a sharp edge. Doing it this way, you've still got the underlying colours in there slightly. Far more natural. And I'll just restate that, because it's bleeding in. Wash out. Take out. And again, mop up. And now, just let that dry for a minute or two. In the meantime, about these brushes. These are aquafine brushes. And they're synthetic, but they're very clever synthetic brushes. They hold a heck of a lot of water, and you can really give them some hammer. That one and a half inch flat, which I just used for the sky, a three quarter inch flat, a number eight round, and a number four rigger. Those four brushes, and that's it. That's all I use. And quite often, I use those for my acrylic painting as well. All the same brushes. There. Now, just give that another minute and then we can start with the hills. Now, my sky is all lovely and bright. I'm going to start off with that big hill in the middle distance there. Um, but I'm going to pre-wet the whole thing and drop the colours in while it's still wet. And I'm using my three-quarter inch brush for this. 
And to be honest, this three quarter inch brush will do a lot of this painting from now on. So I've used the big one, one and a half inch flat for the sky, three quarters for the majority of the rest of the painting. What I was talking about with the brushes, um, lots of people think that you need to have the best quality sable brushes. I never use them. And I'm a supplied artist from Dale Ramey. Everything that I use is Dale Ramey. And I can have anything I want from them, but I don't pick the most expensive stuff because the most expensive isn't necessarily the most versatile. These will hold lots and lots of water, but also I can abuse them, really abuse them. This set that I'm using now is about two years old. So have a look on my website, they're all there. So that's just water. Now, a little bit of yellow ochre. Plenty of water into the yellow ochre. I'm going to drop that on there, up to the top line, and bring it down a little bit. Now, a little bit of burnt sienna, just burnt sienna, plenty of water into that. Pop that in amongst and underneath the yellow ochre, and let it spread in the water. It's always lovely when it all merges and mishes about a bit. Mish, that's a new technical term for you. Coming down here. Like so. Again, wash out, squeeze out. Tiniest touch of hooker's green. Oh my god, he uses hooker's green. It's like admitting you're an alcoholic. My name's Charles Evans, and yes, I use hooker's green. Hooker's green by itself is awful. Never use it. But as a mixer, it's a fabulous colour. You can mix it with every colour you've got. Sometimes two at a time. Three, two colours mixed into the hooker's green. You get lots of different greens. But never use it by itself. And that one is hooker's green and yellow ochre. And just let it merge. See what a nice effect that is. Wash out, squeeze out. Mop up again. So that was yellow oak to start with, then burnt sienna, then hooker's green mixed with yellow ochre. Cross that. Now, a weird mix this one. This is the colour I'm using for my shadow. The blue of your sky. Never change your blues throughout a picture. Because otherwise, not for anything natural, really. Because otherwise the thing's not in harmony anymore. The blue, which is also in blue. A little bit of alizarin crimson. And a tiny, tiny touch of burnt sienna. Bit more blue. Plenty of water into it. And drop some of that in here. A little bit of movement to the thing. As I said, you can still see a little bit of my pencil drawing. And that doesn't bother me at all, to be honest. But that's because I press on so hard so that you can see it. And as I say, I don't rub out any bits. Just draw another line. If you've made a mistake, draw another line. I don't really use rubbers. <laughs> I've never practiced safe drawing. <laughs> oh, am I allowed to say that? I just did. Now, wash out. Squeeze out. Just with a clean damp brush. Soften. Look, I flattened it out. Soften that across a little bit. And again, a little bit there. I've got a nice lightness to that thing. There. And I'll leave that for a second or two. Actually, I won't. I'll just touch that bit there. That's better. Yep, like that now. Now, over to this one. I'm not pre-wetting it like that one. I want a stronger approach to it. So, a little bit of yellow ochre. Some nice russet colours on, on here. Now, a little bit of burnt sienna. Like so. Coming down to that middle distance bit of land. A 
a little bit of white paper there. Quite like that. Now, a little bit of raw umber. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, raw umber is the only brown I carry. So I've got raw umber as a nice standalone brown. If I put a touch of blue into it, I've got sepia. If I put a touch of burnt sienna into my sepia mix, I've got Van Dyke brown. Take my raw umber and burnt sienna together, and I've got burnt umber. So I've got four different browns in one tube. I only use eight colours in total. And it's the same in acrylics, to be honest. No, I think there's nine in acrylics. Um, but it's taken me years to get down to those few colours. But I find that wherever I am in the country, I can mix any colour I want from any part of the world with those same colours. Very easy process. And it's far less confusing. You don't have to have hundreds of colours. And a little bit of that shadow colour again. Touches here and that. Darker down there. And again, wash out, squeeze out, and just with a damp brush, merge colours together a little bit. I've got some trees to go on there afterwards, down the bottom, but I shall do those afterwards when that's dried. In the meantime, that little bit there, yellow ochre, quite strong. that down to the lake. Lock. Are they locks or are they lakes in Ireland? Well, I don't know. I'm just a painter. God, I talk rubbish. Now, a little bit of burnt sienna. Actually, burnt sienna and raw umber mixed. Bit of raw umber, bit of burnt sienna. with the sharp of the brush. Like so. I'll leave that to dry now. So again, it's yellow ochre. This time with a touch of burnt sienna mixed into it. Yellow ochre, bit of burnt sienna. Bit of water into that. And just fill this in across here. Again, still with my three-quarter inch flat brush. All the way across. Keep a nice sharp edge at the bottom there. Have a sharp edge on your bottom. Bit there. Now, a little bit of blue and burnt sienna mixed. Ultimate blue, of course. Burps in. Not too much water in there. And a bit of that at the bottom. And then bring, bring it up slightly. Cage is so much fun. I love this. Incidentally, as we know, YouTube videos hang around for years and people watch them. Years after they've been done. So I'll just point out at this stage, I'm doing this one in the midst of the coronavirus outbreak. Everyone's sick about hearing about it, I think. Um, so everyone has to self-isolate. And now is a good time to make a few YouTube videos. So I'll be doing another one after this one. I'm doing another one tomorrow. So we can have a few going on. So now I'm going to change from my three quarter inch brush and go to my round brush, my number eight round. Very versatile brush, this one. And as I was talking about with being able to abuse brushes, if I were doing ivy growing up a tree, bearing in mind this brush is about two years old and they really get this kind of abuse every day of their life. But if I were doing ivy growing up a tree, I would get my green. And I'll just do this on the side of the paper here, just to show you. But before I do that, I don't want much water into this mix. Before I do that, I'll split the brush. I've made a real mess of it. Go into the paint like that. 
and then step along a little bit, like so. Now, that same brush that I've just knocked hell out of, go back in, a bit of raw amber and blue mixed. And with that same brush, I can now get a nice fine line. And as I say, this one gets this kind of treatment every day of its life. Such lovely, lovely brushes. And I think this is about £2.50 or something. It's really inexpensive. Wash out, goes back to shape up. Such good brushes. Now, hook a screen, burnt sienna, a little bit of water into that, and for distant trees. They're in the distance. Don't start painting millions of leaves. You don't need them. It's a few blobs, look, just tapping on. A few bits here. Leave a gap, a few bits over there. They're in the far distance. That's really annoying. My board's moving. Now, you notice, by the way, this is the same dip of paint from here all the way across. And now we're still with the same dip of paint. I'm carrying on across here. Just a few bits. A few bits on the base there. All with one dip of paint. That's testament to how much these bushes will hold. I love them. As much detail as we want over there. Now back to my three quarter inch brush and it's that shadow colour again. Because everything is nice and dried now, apart from these trees obviously, which I'm not going to touch, a little bit of blue a little bit of alizarin crimson, which is my shadow mix again, and a touch of burnt sienna. Touch more blue. A bit more water, and get a bit of shadow in these hills. This is the scary bit. But as I've said before, don't be afraid of the dark. Put that on there. And that cuts one hill forward from the other one, with the shadow cast on it. Like so. That's quite a brave move, but don't worry about it. If it goes wrong, wash it out again. Which you can with watercolours. People are really scared of watercolours because if you make a mistake, you can't put it right. It's a nonsense. Wash it out. Do it again. Now with a clean damp brush, wash it out. Squeeze it out. And just soften the edge of that. Like so. Clean damp brush. moving it around slowly. I'm not fiddling with it too much because you don't want to get a cauliflower. Because otherwise that's a problem that you've got to solve. Which again, you can. There, look it. Now, into the water area. I'm not going to mess about with reflection on this one. Um, I'm going to save that till the next video, actually, because I'm going to do you some bits and pieces on water. And that'll be from another book, from the last book before this one. I think one was brought out in October and one was brought out in November. Those two books came out very close to each other. So I don't need reflection in this, because that's quite a long, off, long way off. What I am going to do is pre-wet the whole of the water here. Don't worry about this. You don't need to carefully go around stuff. If it's easy enough to miss out, then miss it out. Paint round it, but don't get bogged down with carefully going around bits, because all this is going to be stronger than that anyway, so I can just paint over the top of it. Again, it's that mix, Ultramine Blue, same blue as the sky. Touch of Hooker's Green, and a touch of Burnt Sienna. 
a little bit more blue. Plenty of water into that. Come on, blue, go straight for. See what a nice colour that is for water. Sharp edge of the brush there. And again, forward. Now, just get a little bit of light on that water. Very, very simple. I've got a hair there. I think it's one of mine. It's amazing what gets stuck to your paper. When you're painting outdoors on location and you're sticking that big sky wash on, out on location, that's the stage when the flies always land. And afterwards they become birds. Wash out, squeeze out, and just with the sharp edge of the brush, I'll just take a few bits out of it. Just sucking paint out of the paper. Keep washing my brush out, then I'm taking paint out rather than just moving it around. And a little bit here. Now, that's a very effective technique. And like all effective techniques, people go, God, that's good, I'll have some more of that. And you end up with no water left, just a lot of taken out bits. So keep your effective techniques to a minimum. And that will more or less do for that. I'm gonna have some darker bits in the foreground, but that's afterwards when I've painted the foreground. And that'll do. I need to let that dry solidly now before I carry on with the foreground. And this picture hasn't taken very long at all. It's already going into foreground. Well, uh, we're all lovely and dry now. So over to this side, start of the foreground really, the exciting bit. And I'm going to start off getting that path out of the way. Sorry, path out of the way. A little bit of yellow ochre to start with. Again, it's with my three quarter inch brush and I'm just filling that bit in there. Like so. Now, a little bit of raw umber on top of that, here and there. Few touches there, like so, a bit there. And just swish them together a little bit. Swish, another technical term for you. I'll leave that now. And now I can put the grasses all the way around it. But I'll start off with that little bush. A bush. It's a little bush. It's not the forest of bean that you're painting. It's just a few strokes, so don't go mad with leaves and foliage and twigs and all that kind of stuff. Just a little bit at the edge. Don't make things more difficult. I'm starting off with a little, little bit of yellow ochre. And to prove how easy it is, I'm using my three-quarter inch flat brush, which is not a small brush. I'm going to split the brush here, like I did when I showed you that bit with the round brush. Very, very much the same. Split it, go into the paint like that. And then stick along with a bit of the yellow. Actually, a touch stronger than that. I need it a touch stronger. A bit of yellow there. Now, hook is green and this time burnt sienna. It's a darker green. If you remember last time I used it over there on the hills, I used hook is green and yellow ochre. Now, hook is green and burnt sienna. There, much darker green. A bit of water into that. And again, split my brush. So, and slip on. There you go. Bush. How easy is that? If you touch it out there, you can still see just a little bit of yellow ochre shine through here and there. And finally, a tiny touch of blue. It always sounds odd putting blue into trees. But on top of the green, it doesn't come out blue. It just gives more depth to that green one. This is a colour called sand. 
Charles Evans Sand. It's my own colour and it's a really useful colour. It's good for layering, put that colour down. I'll just show you here. Put that colour down and then put other colours on top of it. It's good as a layering colour. It's good as a mixer. You can put that into any other colour you've got one by one and it'll lighten every other colour you've got without having to use white, which I don't like. Um, stonework, it's really good for stonework. Flesh tone. Flesh tone is notoriously difficult to mix in watercolours. Sand, touch of light red and you've got flesh tone. Very easily done. Just give it there. And that's just the base colour to put my other colours on top in a minute. Wash my brush out well. And again, yellow ochre. Lots of people prefer raw sienna. Because yes, yellow ochre is more opaque than raw sienna. But yet raw sienna will muddy a lot quicker when mixed with certain other colours. Yellow ochre won't muddy as readily, so you've actually got more mixing options. If you wanted more transparency to the yellow ochre, put more water into it. If you remember, I've got yellow ochre in the sky. I've got yellow ochre here. That's not opaque, because I've got lots of water into it. If you want raw sienna colour, Put a tiny touch of raw umber into your yellow ochre and you've got raw sienna. Put more water into it, you've got the transparency. All sounds very complex, that, doesn't it? I know exactly what I mean. A little bit of yellow ochre here, like so, coming down. A little bit underneath there, like the side of the path. Now, hooker's cream and yellow ochre. Bit of hooker's cream there. Quite a lot of yellow ochre into that. There. Nice light grassy type green. And drop a bit in there. If I wanted some blades of grass, put the brush on there, just a couple of Those flicks bring that further forward. A few flicks there. All with a three quarter inch brush. Isn't that simple? And I'll just leave that a second before I do some rocks down here. Rocky bits and some more colour on top of this sand here. Again, I'm starting off with yellow ochre. Don't want too much water into it, I don't want it running. Put yellow ochre there. And bring that across a bit. Now, a little bit of raw umber. Bish bash bosh. Now, black. Never use manufactured black. Always mix your black because black is a flat dead colour when it's a manufactured from a tube. Make it, you've got a bit more vibrancy to it. A little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. There, see? See how instant that is? Another way of making black is hooker's green and alizarin crimson. That'll give you a nice black as well. A bit of that there. Now, this is an old card, credit card, to this is Butlings. Not that I go to Butlings. Scraping on But I'm leaving a gap between each scrape. That way the wet paint gathers in the gaps and gives you the shadow in the rocks. Pressing on fairly hard there, look. Now, I've got wet paint at the bottom, where I've scraped downwards. I'm going to use that wet paint in a second. 
just with my three quarter inch brush. I'm going to pick that up and bring that down onto there. Now a little bit of yellow ochre, onto that, sharpening that edge up a little bit, and a little bit of burnt sienna, plenty of water. stuff now. Yeah. Now we clean that brush, wash out, squeeze out, soften both colors together. And again, wash out, squeeze out, and just sharpen off. A few more darker bits to go down there in a minute, just to finish it off. And now finally, a little bit of grass here. Um, I'm not going to do yellow ochre this time. I'm going to do hooker's green and burnt sienna. Slightly darker. There. And what I'm doing, look, flick upwards. Make those rocks sit down into the landscape. touch of that behind the rocks as well. There. Flick up. Now a little bit of opening blue, hooker's green and burnt sienna mixed. But if you remember, that's the colour of the water. But I want it slightly stronger this time. And a little bit less water into it. What I'm doing, put some down there. A little bit there. A little bit there. And now a few little dabs with the sharp of the brush sharp edge of the brush, just in here. Just dabbing on. Wash out, squeeze out and soften a few of those, just with the sharp edge of a clean damp brush. My three quarter inch brush. And now to finish that off, for once, I'm going to use my rigger brush. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mixed. And all I need is a buzzard. Up there, I think. About there. And that's just a tick with a stick. And that's it. All I need to do now is take my tape off. 
I'm a one take wonder. <laughs> but everything that I use, as I've said before, is Dave Arani. Um, the paints, these paints incidentally were Aquafine, which strictly speaking are students quality paints, but you can see the lovely strength of colour in them. Um, these days, Dale Rowney have put proper pigment into students quality paint, so it makes them really useful and really quite powerful. Um, and they're not expensive paint, and these are all Aquafine. And on my website, you can get everything that I use on my website, it's all on, on there for sale. Um, and I think they're about £1.80 a tube. Aquafine watercolors by Dale Arani. Beautiful things. The paper I'm using is the Lantern Rough. And the Lantern Rough is only £140. I don't pre stretch or mess about with it. Chop a sheet in half and tape it to the board. And it's very, very usable paper. And despite the amount of water that I put on, it will still dry out flat. There's no wobbly bits that stop it from painting. The, the book I've just painted from is Coastal Landscapes and that came out in I think it was November of this year of last year sorry um, very useful book make use of it again for sale on my website I should be making another one of these soon so enjoy thank you for coming bye